Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Ivan, my alias is DreamFramer, and today's lesson is all about noise reduction. If you want to sell your photos online, knowing how to properly reduce noise is crucial because your photos are going through the review process before they are accepted for sale and any photo that contains too much noise will be rejected. The more rejected photos you have, the lower your rank gets in some photo agencies, which might mean you end up with less sales and less money. Why did I mention it's important to know how to reduce noise properly? Well, having some noise in the photo is okay. You shouldn't be trying to get rid of it completely because noise reduction also destroys the details in the photo, like textures and that stuff. And if you try to get rid of the noise completely, your photo might end up rejected for over-filtering. So it's very important to know the fine line between enough and too much noise reduction. I'm gonna show you two simple and two advanced ways to reduce noise in Photoshop. And trust me, when you learn these, that's gonna be all you need to know about noise reduction. You can even combine these four ways to get better results. So let's see how it looks like on an example. What is noise in photography? The noise is a visual distortion that looks like grain in analog photography, but it's actually made artificially inside a photo sensor. So why does the photo sensor do this? Well, the photo sensor is not a perfect machine. It catches the light, it writes down the image, but if there is not enough light, then the photo sensor increases its own sensitivity to the light. But also, because it's not perfect, it increases the errors, and those errors look like grain or noise in the photo. So let me zoom more and show you how this noise looks like. On this picture that was taken with very high ISO, we can see these little red, green, and blue dots that look like grain. That's called color noise. The noise can also be just luminance noise, where you have the same color but different shades of it, like gray or brown or something like that. One very important fact about the noise that you always have to keep in mind is that the noise is always the easiest to spot in dark areas of the picture, like this wooden frame or this shadow over here. But if you look at the light portions of the picture, not so much, like this here. For this reason, when you want to check your photo for noise, always try to find it first in dark portions of the picture. Also, many times you're not gonna have a lot of noise, so the only thing that you have to do is just to reduce noise in the shadows and leave the light areas of the picture as they were before. This kind of selective noise reduction belongs to more advanced ways to reduce the noise, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute, but first let's see how we can reduce the noise globally on the whole picture, because that's the first step in more advanced noise reduction anyway. So the first thing I'm gonna do as usual is making a copy of background layer. I'm gonna drag it down to a new layer icon. Now we have a background copy over here and I'm just gonna go to a filter menu, go to noise and click reduce noise. Photoshop opens this dialog here and this is a very simple way to reduce the noise. You have a nice big preview over here and you have some sliders on the right and let's see what these sliders can do. The first slider is the strength of noise reduction. As you're pulling it to the right, you're gonna reduce more and more of the noise, but you're gonna also lose some details. So there's this second slider that is called preserve details. That slider will recover some of the details that you lost when you were trying to get rid of the noise, but you have to be careful with that because as you are bringing the details back, you can bring some of the noise back as well. So you'll probably want to keep it low while this first slider can go pretty high. The third slider will help us remove color noise. That's the kind of noise that we talked about a minute ago. This slider can also go pretty much high without really affecting or degrading the quality of the picture. So you can, you can play with it more. And the fourth slider is called sharpen details, which also kind of brings back some details and sharpens the edges of the objects on the picture, but you have to be careful with that one, just like with the second one. Now, let's see what happens with color noise when I push this slider to the right. It takes a second for Photoshop to process this, but there you go. We lost all the color noise that we had before. If I pull this slider back to the left, the color noise is back again. And then if I push it to the right again, we got rid of it again. 
The good thing about this slider is that you can crank it up all the way to the right and not really affect the quality of the picture. Now we are left only with luminance noise and we're gonna get rid of this luminance noise with the first slider. But the bad thing about getting rid of luminance noise is that all the things that have a texture like this canvas over here can be affected if you push this first slider too much to the right. Photoshop doesn't really know what is noise and what is the texture, so you have to be careful with the first slider. Just push it to the right enough to lose the noise or majority of it and not to affect the texture of some objects in the picture, like this canvas over here. Let me show you what happens with the picture if I push this slider all the way to the right. We got rid of the noise at the frame, but we lost all the details on the canvas and the wall on the right. So we have to pull this slider back and find the right spot where we're gonna get rid of the most of the noise on the frame and still keep the texture of the canvas on the left side of the picture. Keep in mind that having some noise is okay. Don't overdo it, especially if you're trying to sell your photo online because the image is gonna be rejected. So now let's try to bring back some details. This slider should stay low. Don't uh, push it too much to the right because you're gonna bring back the noise that you just uh, reduced with the first slider. So usually keep this uh, low and also let's try to increase some sharpness by pushing the fourth slider to the right a little bit, but not too much. And this is about right. So now, again, the first and the third slider can be pushed more to the right. But be careful with the second and the fourth slider. You don't want to push them too much because you're gonna bring back the noise that you just reduced. I'm just gonna click OK and it's gonna take a second for Photoshop to process this. And while we are waiting, let me just point out one more important thing. For a different picture, these values that we used for these four sliders would be probably different. So don't stick to the numbers that I applied. Just try to find the best values for your picture. Now you can see that we got rid of most of the noise. If I switch off the top layer, the noise is back. If I switch it on, the noise is gone, but the problem with this kind of noise reduction is that it reduces noise globally everywhere. These white thorns on the cacti and uh, the canvas, it all lost the important details because of that. If I switch off the top layer, you can see how much more details there is. If I switch it on, you can see how we lost all these details. Let's see now what is a better but still simple way to reduce noise globally. Uh, I'm gonna delete the top layer and I'm gonna make a new copy of the background layer. And uh, since I'm using Photoshop CC, I can import this layer directly in Camera Raw Filter. If you don't have Photoshop CC, you will have to open the picture directly in Camera Raw software. So I can just click over here and choose camera raw and uh, that's gonna be it the image is gonna be imported in the, in the camera raw software but if you can't do that if you have older versions of Photoshop then just go to uh, file open as and uh, choose your picture and then go to the bottom right and select camera raw and now if you click open the image is gonna be open in camera raw filter actually camera raw software. I'm just gonna go back to my filter menu and click camera raw filter. Photoshop exports the image to camera raw and the first thing we want to do is to zoom to 100% so we see what's actually going on. Uh, the third tab in camera raw is the detail tab. We have sharpening and noise reduction sections and uh, the slider that we want to move first is color noise reduction again like in the first method so we can push this slider all the way to the right and not really affect the quality of the picture not really affect the details now we're just left with uh, the luminance noise and uh, we're gonna get rid of it by moving the first slider like in the previous method move it to the right not too much though because it can actually affect the details as you can see from before and after 
Camera Raw did a great job in reducing the noise. Now we can play with bringing back the details a little bit, not too much though. Uh, if you push this slider left or right, you can see the difference. You can see more details now than when I push it to the left. And also we can play a little with uh, luminance contrast, but be careful with this slider just like with the second one. You don't want to push it too much to the right because you're gonna bring back the noise that you just reduced with the first and the fourth slider. Uh, we can even increase the sharpness a little bit if we want to and as you can see now the picture looks really nice, smooth, we kept the details and I would recommend this method for most of the pictures that you're gonna be um, selling online. It's very easy to do, it's very intuitive and uh, the results are usually great. Now when you compare before and after you can see how great job Camera Raw did with the noise. This is before and after. We kept the details over here in these thorns of the cacti and uh, all the noise, all the color noise is gone and the picture looks nice and smooth. Now let's move to more advanced methods of noise reduction. Sometimes you have a picture that has a lot of noise in the shadow but not so much um, at light areas and uh, sometimes really there is no point in reducing the noise in the light areas anyway. Uh, so how can we separate these dark tones from light tones and how can we apply the noise reduction only in those dark tones and leave the light tones alone. There are two ways to do that. I'm going to show you both ways because depending on the picture you might end up using one or the other. With time you will exactly know which way is better for what kind of situation and you're going to be deciding quickly about it. So let's see. Um, I'm going to copy the background layer of course to make a new one and from here we can apply the knowledge that we just learned in the first part of this tutorial. So camera raw filter or noise reduction filter, it's just a preference. I like camera raw filter more, so I'm gonna use that one, but you can also use a regular noise reduction filter in Photoshop. So let's open the image in camera raw and uh, we're gonna go again to the detail tab, but this time we're gonna do something different. Um, this time we're gonna just uh, apply noise reduction as a color noise reduction. So I'm gonna crank up this slider completely to the right and uh, this way we are left only with luminance noise. I'm not gonna touch any of the other sliders, I'm just gonna click OK and go back to Photoshop. Now we have the top layer that we're gonna call uh, color noise reduction. To remind you, the background layer is the original image and now we have this top layer. I'm going to copy this top layer and I'm going to call this third layer full noise reduction. This top layer um, is going to be imported to Camera Raw again and just to mention you can use regular noise reduction in Photoshop, it's okay. I just like camera around more. So now I'm gonna go again to the details tab, of course, zoom to 100%. And uh, now I'm gonna apply more of the noise reduction, especially um, uh, luminous noise. I'm gonna bring down the details so we have smooth and nice surface of this uh, frame and everything else and um, I'm happy with how this looks like so I'm just gonna click OK and go back to Photoshop. So now just to re remind you we have the background layer which is the original image, we have the second layer which is just color noise reduction and then on the top we have full noise reduction. Right now what I want to do is to bring back some details in these important parts of the image like this canvas and still keep the noise reduction in those parts that are not important, like this frame. How am I gonna do that? 
somehow I have to make a hole in this top layer so we can see the layer below it because the layer below it has more details, right? Um, the best way to do this and not to delete the part of the layer is to click down here and create a layer mask. The layer mask is now active and I'm gonna use the brush and choose the black color and look now what's going on when I'm painting over the canvas with my brush. There is no black paint on the canvas, right? And that's because we're actually not painting on the layer, we're painting on the mask. And when you paint the black color of, over the mask, that's like making a hole in the layer. So you can actually uh, see the layer below this top layer because I'm making a hole in the top layer. The good thing about masks is that you can go later, use white paint instead of black and just recover your top layer. If you use the eraser and just make a regular hole in the layer, you're losing that layer and that's it. And with masks, you can play with it. So as you can see, I'm painting um, with a black paint over my mask and recovering all the details basically from the uh, layer below the top layer. Just to remind you, the second layer was the layer where we had just color noise reduction. We didn't apply any uh, luminance noise reduction. So right now, when I'm making a hole in the top layer, we are actually uncovering what is under that top layer in these parts of the image. So as you can see, I almost painted the whole image. And yes, there is some noise over there, but because the canvas has a texture, um, it's not really clear if this is a noise or just the texture of the canvas. And that is important if you want to sell pictures online because you can basically trick the reviewer into thinking that this is just the texture and not the noise. If I switch off the top layer, you can see a lot of noise on this frame. If I um, switch it back on, you can see that the noise is gone, but our canvas still stays the same. And uh, that's why this method is so powerful. You can use this method whenever you have um, big continuous areas uh, that you want to recover. But what if you have a picture with a lot of details? So you can't really go with a tiny little brush and paint uh, the whole day because it will be just too time consuming. Uh, for these cases, I have another method for you. It's a very powerful method and it's very quick and I'm going to show you that now. Let's zoom a little bit first and uh, the first thing I want to do is to get rid of the mask. We don't need it anymore. I'm just going to pull it down to a trash can. Now we are back to our three original layers and uh, this time I'm not going to use the mask to separate the light and dark tones. Uh, to just uh, remember, uh, we want to get rid of the noise in the shadows and we want to keep a little bit of our noise uh, in those parts of the image that are important to us. And those are basically lighter tones, the canvas and the image on it. Uh, so how can we do this in a few seconds uh, without using the brush and the mask and all that? The first thing is to add a new adjustment layer and it's going to be a solid color layer. You can use any bright color for this, um, any color basically that is not on the picture. In this case it can be, I don't know, bright red or magenta or blue, I'm just going to stick with red and click OK. And we have a new layer, new adjustment layer that is filled with solid color. What we want to do now is to connect this top layer to the layer below it. We have to tell them somehow to act as one, to act together. To connect them like that and make so-called clipping mask uh, from the top layer, I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key on the Mac and click between these two layers. When I do that, 
these two layers will start acting like one and whatever we do in our noise reduction layer is gonna show up in the top layer with uh, red color so let's double click on this noise reduction layer and see what we can do here double click on the layer opens layer style dialog and we have two gradients on the bottom of it it says this layer and it says underlying layer this layer gradient represents basically the layer that we double clicked to open this dialog so our full noise reduction layer underlying layer is of course the layer below it now let's see how this can help us to automatically divide dark and light tones by blending these two layers to apply a full noise reduction in the shadows and none of it in the light parts of the image for this to happen and guys remember this is very powerful you can use it in many other ways not just noise reduction we're gonna be playing just with this lower gradient that says underlying layer we have white spot and black spot everything between these two spots will be blended between these two layers now let's see how we can protect the light tones if i drag this white point to the left you can see that i'm already uncovering some of the lightest tones from this layer now everything between these two sliders is going to be blended between our full noise reduction layer and color noise reduction layer basically all the tones between these two points uh, are gonna be visible from our full noise reduction layer and everything that is outside of this region like on the right side of the white point is gonna be visible from the color noise reduction layer so let me move this layer more to the left to uncover more of these light portions of uh, color noise reduction layer just to remind you one more time why we used this red layer on the top we used it to connect it with a full noise reduction layer and uh, now they're acting like one so whatever happens with full noise reduction layer we can see in the top red layer it's much easier to see what's going on when you have some uh, bright color like this so we have this harsh edge between the shadow and the, and the light areas now and we have to make it smooth to do this, I'm going to hold my Alt or Option key and click this point with the mouse and separate it in two. As I'm dividing these two halves, you can see that the transition between the shadow and the light area becomes smoother and semi-transparent. So that's how we're going to make this nice transition between the shadow and the light area of the picture and basically blend these two layers in a seamless way. Now remember how I said that the full noise reduction layer will be applying itself in the tones between the black and white points on this gradient. So these are dark tones. That's where we're going to see the full noise reduction layer. And the color noise reduction layer is going to be applying itself to the lightest parts of this gradient. So basically on the right side of the white point, everything in between will be blended that's gonna be our nice transition between the full noise reduction layer and color noise reduction layer between the shadows and the light and uh, now we can switch off this red layer and see what actually we have I'm switching it off and we see our picture again and let's zoom a little bit more to see what we have as you can see the noise reduction is applied on this frame. If I switch off the full noise reduction layer, the noise is back. If I switch it on, the noise is gone. But what about the canvas? If I move this a little bit and you pay attention only on the light portions of the canvas, not the cacti, you're gonna see that even if I switch off or switch on the full noise reduction layer, the canvas stays the same, doesn't lose any details. The cacti, however, do lose some details because they are darker. I could have played more with the transition in blending options to make it smoother so the cacti don't lose this much detail, but uh, for now this is good enough and as a last step I'm just gonna uh, decrease the opacity of the full noise reduction layer. 
When I decrease the opacity, some of the noise will of course come back, but we're gonna get more details on the cacti. When I switch off the top layer, we see some noise, right? But if I switch it on again, you can see that we still reduce the noise on the frame, but we have much more details on the cacti. Now, if you're planning on selling the image edited like this online, it would be a good idea to resize it to close to 6.4 megapixels because this also helps a little bit with noise reduction as well. In one of my previous videos, uh, the video is called Stock Photography, Four Things You Must Know. I'm talking about this and uh, be sure to check out that video. It's in my playlist, How to Sell Photos Online. And that was it, all you need to know about noise reduction. If you liked the video, press that like button, make a comment, subscribe if you still didn't, because that motivates me to make more videos like this. See you soon, bye.